Hey everyone, and welcome back to the 2v2 League. Uh, we're gonna have a game here between. Oh shoot, I've already forgotten. Right! Karakid Ice Cream, which is um, uh, Cow Schmau and Frosty Teeth, versus uh, Peter and SSSS, who are playing as the Unbound right here. Big shout out to the corporate sponsor, you know, you know the drill. Um, that counts as that counts as advertising, right? I hope they still give me my money for that one. Yeah. By the way, I realized for the longest time now I haven't been using the very, very obvious joke. Welcome to Desserts of Karak. Right? Like, how have I forgotten about this? Also, what is this music that's playing right now? Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's a four-player map, so plays two, or it's four-player shallow, so plays uh, two music tracks at the same time for some reason. <laughs> I was like, I haven't heard this one before. Right. Well, <clears throat> go ahead and introduce the teams right here. So, in you know the deserts of Karak for Karakit ice cream, we have Cow Schmau playing in the very defensible position over here. Uh, Frosty Teeth as Coalition playing here in the um, second location. And like I said, this one's the very defensible one, right? This player, I think, can usually get away with going pretty heavy on macro. He may get held off of his second base, but that's about all that will happen to him. Um, but the Shallows is generally a very small map with very, very small rush distance, so usually this player over here, if I can get over to him, does not want to go macro necessarily because uh, he's much more vulnerable. That's kind of my thoughts anyway. Not sure how it actually tends to play out, but you know, we'll see. Now, playing as the Unbound, we've got Peter, the prolific 2PC rusher. Um, which, by the way, he, he had never watched a game of Sparrows before he actually started, you know, doing that. So that's kind of interesting. Because he, he really kind of, he seems like Sparrow a lot. He used to always do it with the Soul Chips. These days he goes for Railguns more often than not, though. And uh, here in the red and white, we've got SSSS playing as the Coalition here, which is not very normal. Ordinarily, uh, we see this guy here playing as the, whatever it's called, playing as the Gelsian. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the names for the factions, right? Um, and he does his kind of carrier rush strategy, but not going to be the case here, and I assume that's because it's 2v2. A lot close, uh, more, you know, close quarters, it's difficult to, um, difficult to pull stuff like that off. He's going to go for railgun fabrication off a bunch of LAVs, kind of, you know, typical Garmelator style gameplay. Base Runner is out here, ready to pick up an artifact. It's also got the turret ready, so... I think they should be able to get some good field control here, Peter and SSSS. And the second uh, production cruiser's out for Peter. Probably gonna see his tech choice any minute now. Artifact has been picked up. Yeah, I love how it plays two, two music tracks at the same time. It's so wonky. Um... What are these two blokes going for? Looks like it's, uh, what is that? For Couch Mouse, the salt ships that are finished. Still no tech choice from Frosty, though, but he's got a lot of LAVs and he's got a lot of upgrades on them. <clears throat> and I was kind of expecting these guys to get the, uh, the field control, the unbound here, but... Doesn't seem to be the case just yet. What, what SSSS could do here is put down a turret, um, but I don't think he needs to. He's actually on pretty good high ground right there and managed to get some good trades, even though he doesn't have the upgrade advantage. A turret has gotten set down over here for Couch Mouse. Or, well, obviously that's actually Frosty Teeth, but you get the idea. And Peter actually going for, um... No, wait, never mind. What is he going for? Still hasn't picked a tech. That's actually really interesting. Uh, you don't normally see these kind of two production cruiser rushes where they don't actually pick a tech, you know what I mean? I think he's just trying to stop that extraction, but... One extraction on the shallows is almost impossible to stop. So, I don't think they're going to be able to manage that. Well, uh, I shouldn't say that too quick. These, this guy's actually pretty close to dying. Come on, come on! You're almost there! So one thing you can do is, like, right when you get here, click R. But it's gonna be fine. He does actually make the extraction, but really is about as close as you can get. And Peter gonna go for Railgun Fabrication now. Probably his two uh, production crews is gonna start pushing out soon, but he does have some Soul Chips to worry about here. And Cal Schmau actually sending these out from all the way across the map, which is pretty interesting. Uh, what are we seeing from Frosty? Still no sign of a second base, which I'm a little disappointed by. I feel like he could be on that by now. Extraction goes down for SSSS, which is nice. And he's actually not in a second base either, despite having his four cruiser out, which is pretty funny. Oh, I, I see what's going on here. His carrier was, like, stuck on the rock there. Sometimes there are problems like that. 
sometimes there are problems like that. Well, Peter is finished with railgun fabrication. He's about ready to, uh, you know, make railguns. Um, and his carrier is doing a fairly good job of blocking here. No, 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 it's not. Uh, so the salvager is probably going to start going down here. Um, this is some comeuppance, I suppose, for what Peter always does to people normally, which is exactly this. Uh, he could lose quite a lot of eco here, but there will be two heavy rogans out. If he can, uh, if he can split them up, I think he should be able to hold this off, right? I don't know how many upgrades there are for armor here. Just one, it looks like. So, focus fire needs to come in for Peter. And it's not bad. And so I think this will be held off, but there were still quite a few salvager losses, uh, before that managed to go down. Second extraction coming up from Frosted Teeth here now. And, um... Cal Schmel really doing pretty well here. Has cleaned up quite a lot of the eco that's gonna have to be rebuilt. Uh, and that will effectively neutralize Peter's ideas of rushing. Frosty on his second base, uh, getting carrier production upgrades as well. SSSS, uh... Just making a bunch of LAVs, it looks like, right now. This turret is in a nice location, I think. It just kind of secures the extraction, you know what I mean? Um, it will get rooted out eventually, but it should be able to get value for itself first. You know, if you think of, like, spending 250 CUs as being worth getting an artifact, which I think most people would. And actually, Peter just kind of running his production cruises into this turret, which is pretty funny. Uh, and what is the choice here for Frosty Teeth? Looks like he's beginning to make some railguns here. Uh, base runner seems to have gone down somewhere for SSSS, didn't quite catch that. But he's beginning to make some railguns as well, going into AAV fabrication, most likely to get the uh, upgrades for those railguns. Ooh, excuse me. I yawned. I'm always yawning, I don't know what's up with me. <laughs> Peter's still got it to deal with that turret somehow. Uh, I imagine he'll just build up a bunch of sand skimmers to do it. He's already got like, um, like six, right? SSSS meanwhile looking like he's about ready to push into the base of um, Kaushima, but I guess he doesn't want to because there's power in every slot there, which is always a little bit dangerous. Uh, I don't know, I do wonder if he could maybe have gone in there and done some damage to the eco, but these three assault ships could easily have trapped his uh, LAVs and that would have been pretty nasty. Peter gonna come in and clear out this turret now. Like you see. Uh, assault ships have actually caught up to the railguns right here. It's a bit of uh, bad positioning by SSSS there. Gonna lose one railgun, I don't think he should have. Um, but he does take that one out. And it's going to be Interceptor Fabrication from Couch Mouth, that's pretty fun to see. SSSS going for the Mag Accelerator now. And he's going to be on a third base pretty soon. Um, Peter, of course, now signed a refiner mode, that's not really how he does things. He's going to just run in there with his, uh, his, with his railguns and do whatever. That's always pretty fun. LAV's gonna boost on in here and take out this turret. Um, they're actually all pretty damaged. I'd like to see him heal those guys up, but it doesn't look like he has any plans to do that. Is he gonna shot on this railgun? He does, and I think he'll kill that one. Now, don't get too close though, you'll lose line of sight. I don't know how the physics for that works, but you know, it, it's fine. Oh, excuse me once again for yawning. I'm just, I'm just so tired. <laughs> Quite a number of railguns out here now for SSSS, which is nice. This is about when you can start, you know, really pressuring carriers and whatnot. And Peter and Frosty look like they're just kind of going back and forth. Um, I think the real fight here is probably going to end up being between SSSS and Cal. And, uh... They're both on three bases, but SSSS has been that on that for quite a while longer. Frosty's got a whole bunch of railguns here, which is really nice. This is, a, this is, I think, a very good move here, because he needs to use those to support his teammate, basically. Otherwise, these guys could already be moving in. 
Um, if Cal can get enough interceptors to do something nasty, maybe there's uh, maybe there's some potential here for this team uh, to win this match. Is what I'm saying. But we don't really see any activity from Cal, from what I can see. I'm kind of wondering where all of his resources have gone here. No interceptors in the hangar, at least. Um, Peter taking a pretty bad fight here, actually. Just moving back and forth, like, slightly out of range and taking high ground damage from those LAVs, which is pretty sad. Rail's gonna do their thing. Taking out these uh, assault ships here. And SSSS gonna start mobilizing that carrier. Doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any power reserves, but whoa! Nah, you know you know what happened here. I mean, I'm I'm almost certain this thing just like spawned in the middle of the map because it came out of the carrier without the uh, outside of passable terrain. I feel I feel pretty bad for Cal for this one because that was not really his fault. Uh, that just kind of popped out in the middle of the map, right in right in the middle of all of his opponent's stuff. So, boom. That's pretty rough. That's pretty rough. Uh, one of the few bugs in DOK that I think really is like kind of kind of funny but also really just needs to be fixed because stuff like that can happen you know what I mean and I've always been wondering like when are we gonna see um, that bug like make like a huge difference in gameplay well I think we just did as it says starting to get power reserves here railguns for his opponents are falling and that carrier should do enough screening to um, keep his railguns alive so it looks like he is ready to push uh, and Peter gonna come in here with the sand skimmers as well which means SSSS does not in any ne uh, any way need to lose these LAVs either. I think they're going to be fine. Well, Assassin's Games are actually leaving now. Oh yeah, they're going to both um, fall upon Frosty Teeth, I suppose, which makes a lot of sense. But yeah, having the Railgun majority by, you know, a bit, let's just say, a bit, uh, SSSS should be able to just kind of steam his way on in here. Doesn't look like he's particularly confident in it. If he was, he'd probably be clicking over there right now, but we will see. And it looks like these uh, strike craft really starting to chew um, frosty teeth apart right here. So is that fight that just took place where all those railguns went down that really was uh, kind of the tipping point I think in this match? I, I know I shouldn't be calling it already, but I'm pretty sure um, the Unbound is going to win at this point now. Uh, really, SSSS he doesn't realize, but he can just move right in there and he's going to be fine. Um, yeah, certainly the production crews are popping out right in the middle of the map. There was not ideal, <laughs> and like I said, there was nothing that could be done about that. Actually, you know what, maybe I have spoken a bit too soon, because this doesn't look particularly good for Peter now, does it? Looks like he's kind of out of position here, could lose some railguns, but... Okay, SSSS going to start moving in now as Power Reserve 2 is on the way. And that's good, uh, that's what he needs to do. These three railguns here kind of being amazingly uh, long-lasting, I mean, I would have thought they'd be dead already. <laughs> I guess the uh, the sand skimmers have been going for um, sand skimmers of Peters this whole time instead, and the reason that they're lasting for so long, those sand skimmers, is because there's uh, already armor two on them. Production cruiser falls over here, so unless Frosty can, well, excuse me, unless Cal can get something really really big done over here, uh, it's gonna be a one on two before too long. There's actually no more military. No, there's a production cruiser. I was gonna say there's no more military production at all for Cal, but that's not actually true frame rates begin to plummet uh, and the railguns are all in position here now whacking down on this carrier um, SSSS charging in there with uh, power in the weapons that shouldn't take too long to finish whoa whoa where did this come from so frosty teeth just ran in with all these LEDs here gonna do some good damage to the eco of Peter which I like um, and Peter of course still not getting refiner mode cuz like who gets that right it's not really important uh, <laughs> I love seeing people who play with that style. I, I just I can never make it work myself, so I, I usually don't go for it. Artifact extracted for SSSS. Ought to power up the weapons there, and he should be able to power it up again. Actually, when the um, when Powers of Three finishes there. Power four immediately on the way. For someone who carrier rushes all the time in 3v3, I think he'd be a bit faster about allocating his power, but it doesn't honestly matter too much now, does it? Um, Frosty's going to mobilize his, his carrier too with powers of 3 in that one, and that should be enough to deal with those heavy railguns, right? Well, I guess it depends how early this gets spotted. Um, they are behind a hill right now, though, those railguns. They're not going to be able to put down any damage just yet. And Peter's going to move right into them. 
That's pretty gutsy. Yeah, okay, he sees it now, he's gonna back away. Um... After power 3 comes out, there should be enough range to start putting the hurt down on the uh, railguns there. But then SSSS will show up. He's just finished off his opponent over there. And uh, he'll have something to say about all that, so... Lots of LAVs too, mind you. Lots of LAVs. And now that the carrier is no longer in the base, there's really nothing to stop these LAVs from ransacking everything over here. So that'll be fine. Yeah, Frosty now able to start hitting those railguns. Have I mentioned, by the way, how much I love the sounds of this game? Like, the, the sound design is really, really pleasing. Just that noise that it makes when, uh, when missiles are hitting. Oh. Ooh. I love it. Power 5 could be on the way here for, um, SSSS, but... He probably won't, uh, he probably won't have an opponent to fight at that point. These railguns guns are going to make pretty quick work of this carrier. And that is going to be the game. Pretty fun one, pretty fun one. And it's nice to see uh, Frosty Thief playing, obviously. He is the league, um, you know, organizer, so really nice to see that... Oh, I've already exited the game. Really nice to see that he's pretty invested in the league and continuing to play. Big shout out to the Farron Shaw Creamery and Souvenir Shop, corporate sponsor. Big fans of them. Go buy their stuff, eat their food, whatever. Uh, enjoy your desserts of Karak. I'll catch you next time.